if I didn't know what the song of the Indigo Bunting sounded like or the toe he sounded like, I would definitely be in some big trouble with uh, this challenge right now. Over the past three months, we've issued birding challenges to find specific bird species migrating through the country. Trying to complete these challenges myself, I've tracked down each bird from the first two months. Now I'm back for the May challenge, hoping to make it a perfect 9 for 9. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and it has been an absolutely crazy May bird-wise. Tons of warblers coming through, a lot of rarities, so I've been super busy trying to see all these interesting species, but now I want to turn my attention to the May challenge to try to find the indigo bunting, the savannah sparrow, and the eastern towhee. With so many birds moving through the state in May, I've encountered all three of these species already, but wanted to try to find each of them individually to really appreciate these fascinating and unique migrants. So I've actually seen all of these birds already this year in different places, but I think each of these species really deserves its own special look. So I want to find all three of these species and really dig into what they are like, how they look, and uh, give everyone an up-close view of these birds. So I'm here to see if I can find all three of them, so let's give it a try. My location of choice to start out this challenge was Retzer Nature Center. Consisting of a variety of habitats, including prairie and woods, this nature center holds many different species. I started walking the trails, searching for the first bird on my list. The bird that I'm trying for first is the indigo bunting. They really love edge habitat, so Retzer Nature Center is a perfect place to find them with all these trees bordering fields. And what I think is going to make this easier is their song is pretty distinctive. It sounds like they're saying, fire, fire, where, where, here, here, as a mnemonic device. I looked around the periphery of the forest, listening for the telltale song of the indigo bunting. As I traveled, the weather started to turn. The weather today is a little questionable. It started out sunny and kind of muggy, and now it's starting to rain, which has cooled everything off a little bit and feels pretty nice, but I don't know what it's going to do to the bird activity. Heading toward the forest to get out of the rain, I reached a point where bird songs seemed to come from multiple directions, some of which were the signature calls of my target species. Everything is so leafed out that it's making it very difficult to see. I hear house wrens everywhere. And then I did hear a towhee and an indigo bunting already. But that is not going to be good enough for today to just hear them. We need to get some looks. So I'm going to try to follow this indigo bunting call and see where it leads us. Continuing toward the indigo bunting, I found myself on a beautiful boardwalk trail through lush forest perfect for many different bird species, including two of my targets. Even though I knew they were there, seeing them was a different story entirely. There's an indigo bunting to my front, an indigo bunting behind me, and then an eastern tohi to the right. And if they don't move, I don't think I'm going to be able to tell where they are because it's so thick in the trees. Uh, so I'm going to keep trying, but it's taken a lot to even get a glimpse of these. As I listened, I realized just how important it is to know birds by song in the late spring and early summer months when everything is green. I hate to say it, but this is definitely the time of year where if you don't know the song of a bird, it's going to be very difficult to find it. Uh, I mean, just check this out all around me. It's so thick that if I didn't know what the song of the indigo bunting sounded like or the towhee sounded like, I would definitely be in some big trouble with uh, this challenge right now. Unsatisfied with only hearing the indigo bunting, I made my way out of the forest, where I hope to see some of them out in the open. I'm in a more open area now, so I was hoping the indigo buntings would be calling along the edges of the uh, tree lines, but so far, ever since I've been up here, I haven't heard any. Did hear a field sparrow, and there were a lot of birds calling and moving around in the trees. There's a crow you can hear behind me. Uh, so there's still a lot of activity, but everything is just so hard to get a glimpse of. After searching the fields and listening intently, I noticed the call of an indigo bunting that seemed to come from a tree with fewer leaves. Once I tracked it down, I got very nice views of this beautiful blue species. The indigo bunting is one of the brightest and most unique looking migratory birds in North America. Breeding plumage males are a brilliant shining blue that shows iridescent in sunlight with dark gray on the wings and tail. 
They can be found across most of the eastern United States and some of the southwestern states in summer, where they reside in a variety of places including forests, fields, and backyards among other habitats. Indigo buntings can often be seen and heard calling from high perches, and their song is one of the hallmarks of the warmer months in the USA. The diet of the indigo bunting encompasses many different types of food, including seeds, invertebrates, and fruit. That was cool, got a good look at that indigo bunting. What was not cool is right as I was starting to take uh, videos of it, it just started pouring. So I had to go under this bush now to make sure my camera doesn't get wrecked. So here I'm just chilling under here. Saw an Eastern Kingbird from there, still listening for everything else, but I'm not ready to call it quits yet just because it's raining. After waiting a few minutes for the rain to subside, I turned my attention to the next species on the list. One down, the indigo bunting. Now let's move on to see if we can find a savanna sparrow somewhere in this grassland area. With a lot of habitat to look through, I began walking through the grassland, finding many different bird species, including several sparrows. Clay-colored sparrows, song sparrows, and henzo sparrows could all be heard and occasionally seen perching up, but the savanna sparrow remained elusive. I'm in what I would consider to be probably the best savanna sparrow habitat. It's uh, the top of the hill with part of the grass mowed, part of the grass is let to grow so the bobolinks can nest here. I'm hoping I can pick out a savanna, but there's a lot of other sparrows to look through too. Field sparrow, clay colored sparrow, henslow sparrow, so definitely a good spot for sparrows in general, but hopefully a few savannas make themselves visible. Eventually, I did hear savanna sparrows from the middle of a field with grass just long enough to conceal them. Now I heard one in the field behind me, but I'm not going to venture out into that field because stuff is breeding out there, so I don't want to mess with it. Uh, I'm going to see if there's one maybe somewhere on the paths up here that will present a little bit better of a view for us. Just as I felt like I was starting to close in on the savanna sparrows, the sky opened up, forcing me to change courses. Well, it started raining again, so I went more toward the tree line. Heard a tohi call very close, and then it just stopped. So, uh... I'm going to regroup for a second, figure out where I want to go next on this property and see if we can pick out one of the two or hopefully both of the species we still need to get a look at. Exploring the area the tohi call was coming from, I arrived at a place with conifer trees bordering another field. Somewhere in the trees behind me there's an eastern tohi, and now comes the tricky part, getting an actual look at it. Eastern tohis and spotted tohis can either be very easy to see or very difficult to see depending on the time of year and depending on their mood. Sometimes they'll just sit up right in front of you or come to a bird feeder and sometimes they're just in the undergrowth so thick that you'll never get a look. So hopefully this guy is feeling good today. Continuing to follow the call, I ended up past the conifers where I spotted my second target species in a large dead tree. It's in the tree right behind me, and we did get lucky today and managed to find one that was sitting up somewhere calling, but a lot of times they'll just be in the thick brush and you're not gonna get a view of them this time of year, so very cool to see that one up there calling. Really beautiful bird. It's actually a member of the sparrow family, even though you might not think that judging by its size. The tohi then flew down on one of the walking paths and fed on the ground, offering very nice views of this interesting species. The eastern tohi can be identified by its black head, orange-brown sides, and white stomach. They also have white on their wings and tail. Eastern tohis can be found throughout the eastern United States, migrating to the northeast during the spring and sticking around for the breeding season. This species can often be heard calling from dense vegetation or up on taller perches. Eastern tohis live in a variety of habitats, including woodlands, forest edges, and scrubland. They prefer staying hidden from view and can be difficult to spot as they forage for insects, seeds, and fruit among other food items. It's worth noting that the eastern tohi and the spotted tohi were once considered the same species, the rufous-sided tohi, but are now split into two distinctly separate species. All right, how cool is that? Eastern Tohi. So two down now, just one to go. So I'm gonna go back up on that hill and try to find a savanna sparrow. Having found two of the three target birds, I returned back to the top of the hill where I had originally heard the savanna sparrows. In spite of my best efforts, I never could get a look at them on this day. 
I've scoured this whole place, and while I did hear a couple of savannah sparrows, I did not get any looks at them yet, which means we are not finished with this challenge. I'm just going to have to find somewhere else where I can get some better views of these sparrows that usually are not very difficult to find, but today are proving problematic, which is exactly what it's always like. You can find a species until you really want to go see it, then boom, gone. Five days later, I ventured to a park in Milwaukee to try to get a look at a savannah sparrow to complete the challenge. I am back trying to find a savannah sparrow to close out the May challenge. Of course, like I said before, we need an actual good look at this bird, even though we did hear some at Retzer a few days ago. So hopefully there'll be one at this location. It's Bender Park in Milwaukee, where there are supposed to be a good amount of them. So let's see if we can track one down and get some good views. After a short walk through some woods to get to an open field, I almost immediately heard and then saw a calling savannah sparrow. The savannah sparrow can be identified by its light underside streaked with brown, light brown mottled back, and yellow eye stripe. This sparrow species is extremely widespread, inhabiting most of the southern United States and Mexico in winter, and expanding out over the northern half of the country, as well as Canada in summer. Savannah sparrows are at home in grasslands and other open areas, where they can often be seen feeding on the ground, searching for insects and seeds. However, during spring, male savannah sparrows can be found perching up in trees and bushes calling, making them quite noticeable. All right, just got savannah sparrow, which means I have gone three for three for the May challenge and nine for nine for all of the challenges. I really hope that everyone else enjoyed those challenges too. And uh, leave a comment if you had fun going out and finding some of these different species. And uh, we'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. With a crazy spring of birding coming to a close, I reflected on the season that was. It's amazing to look back on the different landscapes and locations I was able to find the various challenge birds in. From the ice on the water near the northern shovelers, to budding trees when the yellow rumped warblers first arrived, to the lush forests of May where I heard indigo bunting, these challenges took me to unique places and required me to appreciate some of these overlooked migratory species. We truly hope you enjoyed participating in Migration Madness and look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.